Hey everybody, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. My name is Michelle Lorenz and I'm actually really excited to talk to you tonight about something that really struck me personally. So for those of you that have known me since way back in the days of high school, back in Maryville in the hood, right? The West Side Pride. You guys might remember when I was in high school, I actually had to have emergency surgery when I was 15 years old. And that surgery was for what's called polycystic ovary syndrome. So I was 15 and every month I would get this horrible shooting pain in my abdomen and it felt like Jason was taking an ice pick and stabbing me for an entire day in my abdomen. And everybody was like, oh girl, that's just what happens. Get used to it. Everybody has problems like that. And I'm like, this is not cool. Like, I don't want to live like this the rest of my life, right? Well, so as it turned out, it wasn't normal. It turned out that I had a 15 inch softball size cyst on my ovaries. And so this was when we were 15 and we were just getting ready to leave for a family vacation to go to Disneyland. And so went to the doctor for my very first exam, which was obviously really scary, right? You don't wanna be a woman going to your very first exam at 15. And so I went to my exam and they found this and they said, listen, we're not sure if it's a cyst or if it's a tumor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait a week, go ahead and go on your family vacation, but hey, you gotta be really careful because if you go in the water at the beach and the cyst ruptures, you could die. Or you can't go on the rides at Disneyland because if the cyst ruptures, you could die. So at 15, I don't think I understood the gravity of the situation. I was actually pretty bummed that I just couldn't go on the rides at Disneyland or go play in the waves on the beach because the beach is my nirvana place, right? So we go on the family vacation, kind of a bummer. I later found out my mom was like saying novenas nonstop for that whole week because they were worried obviously that I had cancer at 15. And so we go on the family vacation, we come back on Sunday and we, back then it was pagers, so that's how old I am, right? This was in 1979. So we paged our doctor and he met us over at Good Sam Hospital and on a Sunday morning and he did another ultrasound and they found that the cyst had not only not shrunk, but it had actually gotten a little bit bigger. And so they scheduled me for emergency surgery the next day. And so that cyst was polycystic ovary syndrome. And so I wanted to talk to you about that tonight because there's a lot of women that have this and there's a lot of things that are dangerous for us that we don't know about. So for example, did you know there's about 115 million women in the world that have polycystic ovary syndrome. It's a huge number. So this isn't just a few people that are affected by this. And here's what's really kind of crazy about it. And this is one of the reasons I wanted to help bring attention to this issue is, you know, about 80% of the women that have PCOS, polycystic ovaries, they struggle with their weight. And that's because there's something in our genes that makes us a little bit more insulin resistant. So about 70% of women that have PCOS are insulin resistant. And then here's the scary part. This is what I had no clue about. So we have, not only are we more predisposed to gain weight and so you have to do all you can to watch your weight and try not to eat carbs and all of the sugars that come in breads and processed foods and stuff like that, because it's horrible for your insulin levels, right? But check this out. We are seven times more likely to, what, seven more in times of risk of having heart disease or hypertension we're seven times more likely to get diabetes in our lifetime and four times more likely to get diabetes by the time we're 40. We're also more likely to be depressed. They think that's because of the changing hormone levels, right? And so here's what really scared me about this. You guys that know me, you know I've um, kind of got a piece of junk for joints, right? I've had 16 different surgeries in my life. And in those 16 different surgeries, they always did a pre-op workup and not one doctor ever said, hey, you have PCOS. I saw you had your ovary and tube taken out when you were 15. You're more at risk for heart disease. You're more at risk for hypertension. You need to watch your insulin levels. Not one doctor on my annual checkups has ever tested my insulin resistance. They've tested my A1C, which has been okay, but they've never tested my insulin resistance, which they should have been doing the whole time. So if you are a woman with PCOS, you need to make sure that that's something your doctors are regularly doing, right? So, so, so important. And then here's what's really kind of 
a drag is like my C-reactive protein levels, my inflammation, that's a measure of inflammation in your body that it pulls up on all of your blood panels. My C-reactive protein was like around 12 and 13. They could never figure out why it was so high. Well, if they had taken the time just to look at my medical records, they would have said, hmm, polycystic ovary syndrome, high inflammation, those go together but they never did. And I saw cardiologists, you know, after those scores came back so high, they're like, oh my gosh, you're at risk for heart disease. Let's get you to an endocrinologist. Endocrinologist didn't mention it. He specializes in diabetes. The cardiologist didn't mention it. He should have known, never, ever, ever was told. And you know, women with polycystic ovary syndrome, it's harder for them to get pregnant when they're younger, but there's this, this hormone called malarian hormone that actually make, and it decreases as we age. And so women with PCOS might actually find it easier to get pregnant as they age. But we all know that as you age, there's more of a risk of miscarrying, there's more of a risk of having complications with your pregnancy, and more of a risk to the fetus as well, being born with defects. So why is that? So this is the message that I wanted to bring to everybody tonight because it's so, so incredibly important. So women with polycystic ovary syndrome, endometriosis, if you've had any problems with fertility or infertility, if you've had any problems carrying babies to term, one of the reasons might be because you have high levels of oxidative stress and dysfunctional mitochondria. So I want to take you over to a screen share because I want to show you something that I found that totally blew my mind when I checked it out. So hold on one second here while I go to this slide. And I want to show you this because it really, it's really important um, for all women to know. So I wanted to explain this because honestly, I never knew about this. So I thought if I don't know, then a lot of other women probably don't know. So I want to help them. So it looks like the Facebook Live is, is churning right now. So I'm not going to start for a second. I want to give this a chance to pop up on everybody's screen. But I wanted to talk to you about mitochondria and oxidative stress because a lot of people don't understand how it works. So inside our bodies, we have about 37 trillion, with a T, 37 trillion cells in our body. And every one of those cells have mitochondria. I don't know if you remember that from biology in high school. I had to go back up and brush up on this. But mitochondria are so important because they're where our cells get our energy to work. They're the powerhouses of all of our cells. And so I wanted to show you a diagram. So here's a cell, right? And this little thing right here, that's a mitochondrion or mitochondrion. This is a blown up picture of what it looks like. So we have DNA in our cells in two different places. You're going to find DNA in the nucleus of your cell, but you're also going to find it in your mitochondria. So these little tiny dots that you see here inside this mitochondria, mitochondrion, those are, that's your DNA inside the mitochondria as well. Now here's what's really crazy. So mitochondria are so important, so important for athletes, so important for people with heart disease, for people with neurological disease, because we have a lot of them. So athletes, mitochondria give you your ATP, but they're also what give the energy to your heart, to your brain, to your neurological system. So if you've got any cardiovascular issues, if you've got any neurological issues, you need to really take care of your mitochondria. But women, women, it's even more important for us because our ovaries have the most mitochondria in one cell of any other place in our body. So you see there, your bicep may just have a couple hundred mitochondria in one cell. So this diagram only has one here, but there could be a couple hundred. In your heart and brain, you could have thousands, 5,000, but in your ovaries, in your eggs that you release, those eggs have up to 100,000 mitochondria. And it's what carries our DNA. And here's what I never knew, is your mitochondrial DNA you only inherit that from your mom. So if you ever do a genealogy with like 23andMe, they're going to test your mitochondrial DNA back through your maternal bloodline. And mitochondria are so important to polycystic ovary syndrome, endometriosis. If you've had miscarriages or problems with fertility, if you're, ha if you're a, a dog breeder, a dogs and mares as well, they have the same issues, the same mitochondria in their cells. So whether you have a dog you're trying to get pregnant, a mare you're trying to get pregnant, or you, all of us, this is the same issue that impacts all of us. And I know in horses, for example, huge problem with insulin resistance and what? Polycystic ovary syndrome. So it affects all of us as women. And that's why I wanted to help educate everybody about this. Now, here's what's super important. So let me move my screen up a little bit and get out of the way here. So mitochondria, they provide all of the energy for our eggs to mature 
and be released. They help move our eggs down the fallopian tubes. It's what helps embryonic development. And here's what's important. If you don't listen to anything else I say tonight, the quality of your embryo, get that. The quality of your embryo is determined by the quality of your mitochondria. See, now you understand why that's so important, not just to our own health, but to our babies that you're carrying, right? Your quality of your embryo is dependent on the quality of your mitochondria. Now, here's why that's so important, because as we age, and a lot of us waited later to try to get pregnant, you know, your eggs age. And as your eggs age, your mitochondria ages. And what happens is we get exposed to toxins, whether it's whether it's fertility drugs, whether it's pollution, whether it's hormone treatments, whether it's, gosh, it could be cleaning supplies, could be cosmetics, could be the toxins in your shampoo or the toxins in your makeup, could be the glyphosates on the grass. It could be any type of toxin that you're exposed to. That causes these things in our cells that are really bad called free radicals. Free radicals are like, they're just awful, right? They're just these horrible, damaged, dysfunctional cells, and they damage all of our cells. And we have free radicals in all of our 37 trillion cells in our body. And so when you have more free radicals than you do antioxidants in your body, what happens? You get what's called oxidative stress. And oxidative stress damages our whole body. It's what causes wrinkles, age spots. It's what causes gray hair. It's what causes you not to be as good of an athlete at 40 as you were when you were 20. Our bodies age, our cells age. And the reason they age is because of oxidative stress damaging our mitochondria. Now I want to give you a secret because there's something you can do about it. And it's why I'm so, so in love with this company I'm working with because we're making such a huge difference in people's lives and in animals' lives, right? So you see here on the screen, this is the same picture that mitochondria. Well, there's something I want to tell you about and that's NRF2 activation, NRF1 activation. That helps with mitochondrial biogenesis. What is that? Growing new mitochondria. So inside your cell, you want to have a lot of mitochondria. You want them to multiply. And you want them to be big, thick, healthy, robust mitochondria. That's how you can ensure your ovaries are going to be healthy. It's how you can ensure your embryos are going to be healthy, right? Well, here on this drawing, I just put this little pink circle. That Let's pretend that that's NRF2. So NRF2 activator. NRF2 is a protein in our body. And it works, think of this, as a monitor and a messenger. So remember back in, uh, in history class when we talked about Paul Revere warning Americans that the British were coming? Well, Paul Revere was sitting there waiting for the signal. That's just what this does right here, this NERF2 protein. It sits on the outside of your cell, waiting for monitoring things, just checking things out. Is there anything dangerous going on? And if it gets signals that you've got too much oxidative stress, if you've been poisoned, if you've got the flu, if, if you, anything like that, right? Anything going on in your cells, this monitor, this NERF2 protein on the outside of your cell says, oh my gosh, I gotta move. I gotta be like Paul Revere and warn the cell, hey, we're being attacked by toxins. We need you to turn up God's pharmacy in your body. We need you to turn on your body's own defense system because we all have defense systems in our bodies, but they don't work as well when we're 60 as they do when we're 20, right? And so what we wanna do is we want this NERF2 to move to the nucleus and to ring the alarm bell. So our body does what? It's, that's called transcription. And that's, we want our body to say, okay, release your defense system, release antioxidants, release anti-inflammatories. When I was having those painful monthly cycles, I needed more antioxidants. I needed more anti-inflammatories and I wasn't getting enough of them, right? And so I needed NERF2 to activate my body. And the other thing I needed to do is I wanna activate my mitochondrial DNA. Works the same way. You have this monitor on the outside of your cells and you want it to ring the alarm bell inside your mitochondria. And you do see that here. It works with this gene. You don't have to worry about the name of the gene. It's called PGC1-alpha, but it also works with these magic genes called sirtuins. So you may have heard of this on Good Morning America recently, or if you've watched any of these podcasts like Dr. Mark Hyman, what are sirtuins? Those genes are called our longevity genes. And those genes are magic. They were just discovered at Harvard and MIT. And it's what is activating our bodies when we're younger and slowing them down when we get older because those sirtuin genes don't work as well. And what you need is another protein called NAD. And NAD does the same thing as NERF1 and NERF2. It's a protein 
that attaches to your DNA, either inside your mitochondria or your DNA inside your nucleus. And it says, hey, turn on the alarm, we need help. But as we age, we don't have as much NERF2 and as we, or NERF1, and as we age, we don't have as much NAD. And as a result, as we age, what happens? Our mitochondria get more damaged. And so, like I said, you want your mitochondria to be healthy so your embryos can be healthy. You want your mitochondria to be healthy so your ovaries can be healthy. So you don't have these 15 inch softball sized cysts on your ovaries, right? So how do you upregulate those? Well, NERF1, NERF2, and NAD activation, they all work the same way. You know, the Nobel Prize in Medicine was just awarded a couple weeks ago at the beginning of October to scientists at MIT and Harvard and Johns Hopkins and Oxford over in England. And they discovered a protein that attaches to your DNA and it rings the alarm bell to tell your body to change your body's gene expression. That's what NERF1 activation, NERF2 activation, and NAD activation do. And here's what's really important. They need, they work together. They work together in synergy, just like the players on a football team or a basketball team or a volleyball team. You're stronger as a team than you are as individuals. The same thing happens here. So look what happens over here with NERF1 activation. It upregulates the gene that controls metabolism. So important to polycystic ovary disease, right? I just told you we have problems with gaining weight. And it's also important for this PGC1 alpha gene. What does that control? Mitochondria. It helps protect your mitochondria health. It's with mitochondrial biogenesis, new mitochondria. And look what happens. If you activate NERF1 alone, you get a 71% or 65% increase. But look what happens when you activate NERF1, NERF2, and NERF and NAD. And then remember it said sirtuins. Sirtuins need NAD to work. If you just take an NAD activator, you're going to get about a 12% upregulation. But if you use NAD with NERF2 and NERF1, you're going to get 1800% increase in this gene, your body's defense system, <laughs> this gene that helps you produce what? Your Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines inside your body to protect your body, to protect your ovaries, to protect your embryos, to protect your uterus. And then inflammation. So remember I told you my C-reactive protein level was off the charts. It's supposed to be under one. Mine was at 13. So my body was just this inflamed mess from my 16 different surgeries, from obviously from having PCOS. And here's what we know. This gene here, the NERF2 gene, it controls antioxidants. So that's superoxide dismutase catalase and master antioxidants. You probably heard about glutathione peroxidase. It increases that production by a ton when you just take a NERF2 activator alone. But when you take a NERF2 activator with an NAD and NERF1 activator, the team works better together. You get 95% increase. But here's the inflammation marker. One of the biggest genes in our body, this survival gene that we've needed for tens of thousands of years to protect us before we had a Walgreens, before we had a Costco where we could go buy prescriptions. If we wanted to have an anti-inflammatory process, we needed to just find a way to flip the switch on God's pharmacy in our body. And that's what this hemiox gene controls. It helps you control inflammation. So if you just take a NERF2 activator, it's going to make a big difference, 51% increase in that gene's activity. NERF2 is going to attach, that protein is going to go in and attach to your DNA, and it's going to change the expression of a gene, which gene, this hemiox gene that controls inflammation. We all know every month your stomach gets, stomach gets bloated, you don't feel good. That's inflammatory response, right? And it gets worse as we age. But here's what's amazing. If you take an NAD, NRF2 and NRF1 activator together, you're going to get almost a 1600% increase in the activation of that anti-inflammatory gene, turning on God's pharmacy to help you feel better, to help your body protect itself, to help your body heal itself. And you know, none of these genes, they don't work as well at 60 as they do when we're 20. In fact, that doctor at Harvard, Dr. David Sinclair, he's like, the reason that we get disease when we get older Disease doesn't cause aging. He believes aging causes disease. Why? Because these survival genes activated by NERF2 and these longevity genes activated by NAD, they don't work the same. They don't work the same. And so we want to find a way to get them to work at 60 like they did when we were 20. Or even if you're 20 and you have PCOS, we want to find a way to help your body defend itself, to decrease your body's inflammation, to have you have healthier ovaries, healthier uterus, and a healthier embryo, right? All of these things are by upregulating your body's mitochondria. Now look, what's really important when you talk about mitochondrial health, it's important that you understand that you have to go look at the science. 
these are our bodies. You don't want to trust your bodies to somebody who doesn't have clinical studies, right? So that's super important. Ask whoever's talking to you, whoever shares this call with you, this live with you, to talk to you about peer-reviewed science and why you need that. But I want to show you something. I want you to show you where you can go so you don't have to just believe me. I want to show you where you can go to check out peer-reviewed science. So if another company says, hey, try my product, you need to say, hey, is it on PubMed? P-U-B-M-E-D, that's the U.S. government's website. And they only put peer-reviewed studies that have been reviewed by other scientists to make sure they're legitimate, that they're not junk science, right? That it's not snake oil. That's where you go to trust the science. And so let me show you how to do that. I'm going to take you over to, okay, I'm going to take you over to this page and I'm going to show you a couple of things. So if you go to PubMed, you see it here, pubmed.gov, and you type in something, you can type in the name of a product, you, and our product here has been verified. But I want to show you with PCOS what you can do. If you type in polycystic ovary syndrome, it's going to bring up, what, 49 different studies. So let me show you what that looks like. So just go to PubMed. And this is what the first page is going to look about. So if you want to know if polycystic ovary syndrome is related to mitochondria, just type that in together. Poly PCOS and mitochondria. And you're going to see this is brand new science. So a lot of you may be saying, Michelle, I haven't heard of this before. I've got polycystic ovary syndrome. Why not? Let's look at the years on these studies. 2018, 2017, 2017, 2019. This is new science. If you want to take care of your ovaries, you need to activate your mitochondria. You need to get rid of that junk inside your cells, that oxidative stress and those free radicals. They're damaging not just your ovaries, not just your uterus, but a whole lot of other things. And if you want to type in, let's look at this one. This is PCOS and oxidative stress, where we have over 300 studies. Again, new studies, new science. This is how you as women can help better take better care of yourself. And you know, oxidative stress is related to so many different disease processes. You can type in cardiovascular disease, you can type in fibromyalgia, you can type in autoimmune disease, hypothyroidism, gosh, any list of things, fatty liver, go to pubmed.gov and that's where you're gonna find if the science between oxidative stress is related to the thing you're suffering from. I wanted to show that to you because that's where I got my research, right? That's where I learned about what was happening inside my body and how I wanted to take care of it, how I could make myself healthier. That was so important to me, and I know it's important to you as well. So, you know, I wanted to share that story I mentioned to you when I was 15, and I had that ovarian cyst, so they removed the cyst. Let me give you an example of why mitochondria and oxidative stress matter, because that happened in the middle of August, actually towards the end of August, by the time it was removed, I was uh, in dance class and, and cheering. I was back on the sidelines cheering at a football game in three and a half weeks. <laughs> now, if I've had other surgeries, I'm still down for the count two months later. Why is that? It's because when you're younger, your body's pharmacy works better. Your NERF2 protein activates your body better. Your mitochondria is healthier. So if you want to improve your body's natural defense system to help your body protect you the way it did at 60, as it did when you were 20, then you need to activate your NERF2. You need to activate that NERF1 protein and you need to activate that NAD that turns on the body's longevity genes. Those genes decline by 60% as we age. My age now, if you've hit in your 50s, you've got about two thirds less activity in those sirtuins so that's why we get susceptible to diseases, not just diseases of our reproductive system. But you guys, turn on God's pharmacy. Turn on God's pharmacy so that you can live healthier. You know, and David Sinclair at Harvard, he doesn't believe it's just that you're going to live healthier. He believes it's going to extend lifespan. His book, you can check it out, it's called Lifespan. Lifespan, why we age and why we don't have to. And he believes it's related to these sirtuin longevity genes to our mitochondrial health and what damages our mitochondria, free radicals, and oxidative stress. So I wanted to share that message with you for all of you women out there. If you have polycystic ovary syndrome, if your daughters, your moms, your sisters, your, your aunts, if they have a painful cycle every month, I gotta tell you, like I said, it felt like an ice pick going into my abdomen for a whole day. Not fun, right? Not fun. But it's so important for us women 
help us take better care of ourselves. So I wanted to share that message with you. Spread the news out there. Again, not just for women. If you love dogs, if you breeding horses, mares, bitches, they have the same issues as we do. All mammals have these same genes. We have sirtuin genes. We have NRF2 that activates our survival genes. We have NAD that activates our longevity genes. This is the breakthrough that's been happening in science. And I would love to share more with you about how NERF2, NERF1, and NAD activation can help improve your overall health, turning on your pharmacy inside your body. So get a hold of me if you have any questions, get a hold of whoever shared this with you. And as we sign off tonight, again, just everybody that's on this, if you could type in the Facebook box where you are coming from, what city, what country, I know I have friends all around the world, I would so totally appreciate that. But share this, because again, make sure you get your insulin resistance checked if you have polycystic ovary syndrome. Make sure that you're watching your intake of inflammatory fats, canola oil, nothing fried, nothing processed. All of that's gonna raise your insulin levels and you're already insulin resistant if you have polycystic ovary syndrome. So make sure you take care of your body. Make sure you tell your doctor because your doctor doesn't know. I Nobody talked to me. I'm 56 years old. This happened when I was 15. <laughs> So in 41 years, not one single doctor has told me I was more at risk because I had polycystic ovary syndrome. So I wanted to make sure you got that message tonight. This is Breast Cancer Awareness Month as well. More women's health issues. Take care of your breasts. Do self-exams. Make sure the women that you love are doing self-exams, getting your, getting your mammographies as well. So thank you, everybody, for joining me tonight. I'm going to sign off again like my foster son used to say goodnight to me by telling me he loved me to God and back. Love you guys to God and back. Thanks, everybody. Have a really blessed evening.